All right, today I'll be showing you how to make a text editor for Windows Desktop. So in the first part, I'm just going to show you how to design it, and then I'll show you the coding in the second part. Okay, so now I have a form. We're going to open up the toolbox. And we're going to add in a menu strip. And you can see a pop up down here. And we're also going to add in a open file dialog right there. And it's going to pop up down here. You won't see it up here. And we're going to do a save file dialog. There we go. And then we're we're going to customize the menu strip. So we're going to click up here, type in ampersand file. The ampersand just gives it a shortcut so that you can access it with the keyboard and not the, and don't have to use the mouse. I'll show you that later. New. We're going to do open ampersand. And then save. And then save as and then we're gonna whoops insert separator. We're gonna do exit. There we go. And now we're gonna do a help so it looks more professional because you see all those like applications made by big companies all have a help. So I'm gonna add that in and we'll do an about and you you just put your name and stuff like that. But now for the most crucial part of a text editor, we need a text box. So I'm just going to drag one in. And then we're going to go over here to the properties. We're going to go to the multi-line. Go to true. And now I'm going to show you how to make it automatically resize with the form. Go to dock and go click on this middle one. And there we go. We're also going to change the what the form displays. We're going to do text editor there you go now let's run it see how it is so there we are and we make it bigger resize it the text box should all go with it and you see how we have all the menus now you press alt and then f and then you can access it like pretend i want to save i just press s there it goes but then we haven't coded anything, so these things don't do anything right now. And you can't see it unless you press Alt. So, thanks for watching, and I'll show you how to code this in part two.